Hello friends, good morning. It's been a while, probably since sometime last year, but I figure if I don't make a little video now, despite the fact I haven't brushed my hair, I'm not wearing any makeup, and I'm still wearing my pajamas. My point is, if, if I don't do it now, then I'll just keep putting it off. And I never f meant for this YouTube channel to be a big deal or anything, but I did want to be consistent with it. So here I am. I thought for this video, I would talk about the five things, five goals I have for the new year. I realize we're now into February and who cares about New Year's stuff, but I'm trying to bring this with me throughout the year. And I figure while I'm talking, because I don't want to just sit around and be a talking head, I'll show you a little bit of the house. We moved in almost a year ago, so you can see what's going on and take you with me um, during my morning. I'm trying to do a few things in the kitchen. So right now I am getting ready to make a broth. We are having my parents-in-law and my brother-in-law over for dinner tomorrow. We're roasting a chicken, having most mashed potatoes and gravy, so I need some broth. So while I am filling this pot, I will tell you about the first thing that's on my list of goals, which I have spoken about on my blog and on Instagram and in my newsletter. But if you don't um, see any of those things, and maybe you haven't heard me go on at length about it, a friend of mine, Heather, talked about the idea of just marinating in things. Like if you're a person who has um, the inclination to sort of collect and curate things, let's say playlists or perfumes, and maybe you you make that playlist and you fill it with music that's new to you and they are totally loving it in the moment, and then you never listen to it again. Or say you're a person who writes perfume reviews. So you get this full bottle of perfume and you review it and you post up your review and then you tuck that bottle at the back of your cupboard and you never wear it again. So what I'm doing is I'm going to take a look at those things, those playlists, those perfumes, and I'm going to take that stuff out and I'm going to use it and just marinate in it all year long. Talking about perfumes, I think what I'm going to do is take you back to the bedroom and show you the state of the perfume cabinet right now. We're just walking throughout the house. There is a random couch in the middle of the floor that used to be in another room. That's not where it's going to stay, but it's been there since Christmas. Okay, now we're in the bedroom. Perfume cabinet is behind me. Let me give you a little tour. It's the same cabinet that's shown up as in other videos, but I did a little bit of reorganizing because there's a lot going on here. As I mentioned somewhere else, there's a lot of unused real estate. I probably could have twice as many perfumes if there were a shelf here, but that's a terrible idea. I do not need twice as many perfumes, right? Or do I? Hmm. So we've got a couple of shelves. I think these are typically used for spice racks, that sort of thing. And then we've got them over here too, but I think it's a different brand. And then in the middle here is a tray that I have had for many, many years. It's got, um, oops, it's got painted flowers on it. Not that you can really even see any instance of that. So that is the state of the perfume cabinet. And that's a, that's a lot to take in, right? So what I'm doing in terms of marinating is I am choosing four fragrances every month that I'm going to rotate through and spend time with. These are actually January's fragrances. I haven't switched them out yet. This is a sort of Miss Havisham vanilla this is a lavender and myrrh and tonka. This is a Swiss Miss packet and plastic doll head musk. And this is a slithery serpentine immortel. But I will be choosing four more to swap them out with and marinate in. As a matter of fact, 
Why don't we pick out February scents together? I think first we will take Malia from Nobile 1942. I recently wrote about this one on my Patreon. It's a sort of sour, twisted citrus. And I am trying to find some scents that encapsulate for me the feeling of demented joy. And so I'll start with this one. Next, I think we'll go with Fleur de Peau from Diptyque. This is sort of a ghost story about the sapphic love between a governess and maybe a, a uh, lady of the house. Okay, two more. What are we going to go with? Keel's musk, I think, which is just the most intense, nastiest musk. I love it. And then I think we're gonna go with Synthetic Jungle, which is uh, a Stendhal syndrome in a bottle. So there we go. I'm going to pretend like you were giving me some input and that you okayed all of these choices and that we are all good here. Time to marinate. So that was thing number one, but we're headed back into the kitchen to talk about thing or goal number two. So I read, no, I was watching a Japanese blogger, probably one of these uh, how I spend my day off people or what I eat in a day. And they were talking about how in the 80s, I guess the Food and Drug Administration um, in Japan had come up with some sort of catchy, um, I don't know what you'd call it, to, just to get people to make sure that they're eating, um, they're eating what they're supposed to be and they're getting all their nutrition. They said that you should eat 30 different kinds of things a day. And I don't know if that's still a thing. They were talking about it as if it was um, just a charming little retro throwback. But still, you know, if you, you have seen Japanese breakfasts, for example, there's all the little side dishes of the pickled veggies and the spinach and the whatever they've got there. And so I, I do think a lot of the country probably still does that. Of course, I'm not, I don't wanna make any generalizations, but from the YouTube videos I've seen. That's that's uh, what I'm observing. So I really love that idea. And I know I don't eat enough fruits and vegetables. So what I'm trying to do is make sure that we are eating at least 30 different kinds of things a day. And one way I'm doing that is having like a lot of little prepared things. Like this is a little fruit salad I made with uh, some sort of Asian pear and pineapple and these tiny little grapes. They're called gummy berries. I hate fruit, but these are actually delicious. And I've got my pickled and fermenting things in here. I've got some pickled red onions. I've got some soy sauce eggs. I've got some salad stuff that I cut up. I've got my sourdough discard, which I'm not just gonna, you know, eat a spoonful of that or whatever, but I'm just trying to have lots and lots of options for us. So goal number three is this year, I am attempting to read 200 books. Probably not any of these because I am having a dreadful time seeing right now and I'm only reading um, eBooks but who knows, I could get my eyes checked out. And so <laughs> that probably shouldn't be on top of that. Right now I'm reading a lot of books on my Kindle. One thing I'm doing to reach my goal is I have got some books of poetry by my bedside. I'm reading several poems every night before I go to sleep and I have finished two of these books in that way. I did not love this one. However, this one was amazing. So this is my Goodreads account. 
Some other things I am doing to reach my goal of 200 books is this one, for example. I'm listening to an audiobook version of this. I am reading a lot of graphic novels. And then, of course, well, that's a, that's a net galley book. That's also a net galley book, meaning that these are way super... Um, early advanced copies. They're not published yet. And so far we are on the fourth day of February and I have read 23 out of 200 books in 2023. Okay, so since we're at my desk anyway, it's a good time to talk about my fourth goal for the year, which is to write every day. And I don't mean, you know, write a a piece of a book every day. I don't mean even write anything important every day. Just make sure that I am writing something every day and I'll show you what that looks like. So here's the state of my desk right now. It's not as tidy as it could be. This is a new tarot deck from Coco Rina that my best good friend got me as a belated Christmas gift. I think this was a Kickstarter, otherwise it probably would have been here sooner. And I have got a new planner. This is the Ignota Diary. And I think this is a little more my speed. I do not need a lot of space every day. For example, hang on a second here. Okay. I just make notes for myself, but I think... This is a lot more low-key and fits my needs better than the things I've been using in the past. I'm just not that much of a planner. These are some scents that I am currently trying, and I hate that my this phone is on my desk, but this is for my day job, and it's got to be there. So this one smells like a heavy metal Glamazon guitar solo. I was wearing it yesterday. It's amazing. And I wrote about it yesterday. So, so for example, I've got my ongoing document of Midnight Stinks um, drafts and so on. There's a lot of impressions and ideas and things I might want to get to in the future. And then there's the actual reviews that I write out for TikTok. And I know that looks terrible on camera. Uh, and then what I do afterwards is I will... I save these reviews and then I add them to an ongoing document that I have for my end of the month reviews on my blog. And I'll show you what that looks like once it's been published. Okay, for example, there are my January 2023 perfume reviews with a beautiful image by Erte that I'd never seen before. Do I count writing an Instagram caption as a piece of writing? Well, have you seen my captions? They tend to ramble, so yes, I do. I wrote that this morning because I realized that my books aren't selling very well on Amazon and it's probably because I do absolutely nothing to market them or talk about them. So I made a little post and shared some things that uh, Sonia Vitomsky, a poet I love, actually my favorite poet, I shared some very nice things that Sonia said about the art of darkness. And that's my writing for the day. Or it could look like this. I don't do it as often as I used to or as often as I'd like to. But this is my dream journal, where I wake up in the morning and write about whatever went through my head the night before while I was sleeping. Okay, but getting back to Goodreads, a piece of writing for the day could look like a book review that I've written. I don't know that I have written, oh yes, I did write one for this guy here. I did not like this book at all. And I wrote a book review for it. There it is. So that can also count for me as writing. Okay, but what about actual writing? Maybe you're wondering. This is something I'm working on currently. I'm currently writing The Art of Fantasy. Actually, much, much of it is already done. And so it could look like, for example, Okay, maybe this is more of a peek than I should be giving, but I don't know how many people are going to be reading this. 
It could look like writing out a chapter of a book. It could look like writing out a caption for an image. These images aren't necessarily going to be in the book. I didn't get permission for many of the things I wanted to use. You're looking at an earlier draft. But that is also what my daily writing could look like. Another place where I spend some time writing is my newsletter, which I mentioned a little bit earlier. I don't have a lot of people subscribing to this, but um, I still have fun with it. Also, I write over on my Patreon for my supporters. And I try to do this maybe two or three times a month. And these are maybe exclusive reviews that I'm not sharing anywhere else. Maybe they are um, early reviews. Maybe they are just thoughts pertaining to perfume. Maybe not reviews. But this is also a place where I do some writing. So if you have a daily writing practice, I would love to know what that looks like for you. The fifth thing on my list, this comes about... Actually, I have a perfect visual for you. At the beginning of every year, I have a tarot reading with my friend Angeliska. And it's, it's not something I want to get into, the specifics of it. But my health was something that I'm really concerned with. I'm really starting to grasp that I am mortal. And one day I'm not going to be here. And I wouldn't really want to prolong my stay here on Earth. And so strength was something that kept coming up. And so this year, I am working very hard. I I'm, I'm, took that very literally and specifically. I am strengthening my knees. It could look just like doing those little stretches. I don't know if you can hear that. I have got very creaky knees. My grandmother had terrible knees. She had both of them replaced and she never fully recovered from it. So I have started doing these kind of exercises. And because, you know, my knees aren't that bad, this doesn't feel like, you know, agonizing physical therapy. It doesn't really feel like doing much of anything at all. But also, I've gotten to the point where I can't really do a squat. You can't see me, but I'm trying to do a squat right now. And I don't love that for me. And, you know, sometimes I will go on a walk and my knees will start to feel a little bit wobbly. I don't love that either. So I think one thing I can do is start working on my knee strength. And I'm trying to do it in easy ways that I'm not going to skip or avoid because I hate it. So if you've got any suggestions in that regard, or if you have a daily writing progress, I mean practice, or if you hate eating fruit and you've figured out some tips and tricks and hacks to getting yourself, uh, you know, to eat more of a variety of fruits and vegetables. I actually love vegetables, so that's not a problem. If you're reading a shitload of books and you've got some ideas how to sneak some more in there, or if you are marinating in the things you love, tell me about the things you love and how you're spending time with them. All of those things. I want to hear about your goals too. And um, hopefully I will try to have a few more videos this year. That's not a goal. Five is enough, but I will work on it. Till later, weirdos.